the media has got the report of what was discussed. Um, for me, it boils down to, to then, because it was only council members that had access to that documentation, and you then ask if council members were not in agreement, whoever it was that leaked information, because if a document that is only in the hands of council, uh, that for me is, is it's probably taking one aback to ask in terms of the integrity of the process that happens in, 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 at the council meeting. But being as it may, uh, information has uh, been said, if you have indicated you have seen the report, uh, of, of what it was. Now, firstly, let me explain the process of the interviews. So, interviews, as you know, are having had, or the interview process that we have agreed upon before embarking on the interview on that day was we are looking at four criteria. Two of those criteria will be quantitatively scored and two of those criteria will be qualitatively from the discussions that is going to emanate from the joint search committee um, that also served as council members. So we had the closed door interviews where it was only the panel and then we had the public presentations of which I'm sure a number of you have seen both candidates uh, on, on, on that score. The third one was psychometric tests and the fourth one was the background checks and the reference checks of those that, are, that they are working under. And council has, or firstly the JSCCS, have considered all of these aspects before the recommendation of the majority of the JSCCS members were then tabled to council. Because ultimately, if you look at the last act which I have referred you to, the appointing authority is council. And hence this was then taken to council that last night, after a very thorough debate, uh, have then made the decision. Now, there are also rumors out there that we have seen that council uh, ignored the scores that were given and whatever. Now, those scores that you might have seen was primarily on interview and presentation. So from those quantitative, that there's, a big, there's a, a, a big process. So what you do in an interview process is you look at those quantitative scores. And if those, those of you who have seen that before, those quantitative scores were not far from each other. It was not far apart from each other. So what you do is you take that process and you supplement. You discuss, and council have discussed, JSCCS have discussed, and looked at what is the type of leader that we are looking for? Unfortunately, this is not your typical administrative position. This is a CEO, which is the vice chancellor. What are the issues that NAST have currently in terms of, of the issues that are there? Which of these two candidates are filling the criteria and the type of person that we are looking for in the council and in as, as vice chancellor? And that's a thorough process that we went through, having considered all of these four factors. Because people are looking at scores they might have seen in, in, from interview and presentation. That was not the only aspects. There was other two aspects, psychometric, background check, and then looking at the requirements of what we want as a council in the person and against what was emanating from all of these factors. And what I want to make categorically clear is when we, because others were saying that it seems as if council was impressing or some of the council members were impressing or whatever it was, as there was a difference in opinion. And according to governance, if there's a difference in opinion, what do you do? You then call for a vote. And that vote was then called, and nine out of 14 council members have voted for in support of the appointment of Dr. Nama. And that I have to also make clear to the media, please report it, the majority. And that call was because 
not everybody on the table 100% agreed towards um, appointing Dr. Nama. And that's why we had to call for the vote. And that vote, after having considered all of the factors, after the other members that indicated that no, other members indicated yes, there were two motions that on the table. And council is the appointing authority. That's a thorough process that we went through. Also to inform you that background checks and, and, and psychometric tests was not done by council. It was outsourced to an external party. And that process was combined with, 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 with this. Having said that, um, another question that, that uh, Sahis asked was, some of the people are saying that there is an agenda from the minister. If there is an agenda from the minister, I really don't know. Because she hasn't communicated that agenda to us. And I'm pretty much sure my council members will probably also agree to that uh, in terms of an agenda. We don't know what that agenda is. Because the moment that you say minister is impressing her views on us, then it touches down on our characters as well. Because who are we to be impressed upon uh, something that the minister wants us to do? No. We are independent people who have got a fiduciary responsibility towards this institution, who wants to ensure that governance is maintained, and therefore we went through this process. Number three, um, yeah, oh, I think I, I answered number one and number three first. So that is that is what I can tell you, Sakhis, on, on those questions. And what I really want to implore upon the media is. There is no sinister. I, for example, do not even know Dr. Nama. I have seen him face to face for the first time at the interviews. Many of my fellow council members probably also don't know. Those that are in the academic sphere probably know him uh, from because they, he's working at you now. But none of us, I believe, have got any sinister um, ideas about who we want what. We look for the best candidate that in accordance with our views as a council who has been entrusted by the act to appoint um, uh, the vice chancellor. And therefore I'm asking the media, please go out there and also tell this side of our story substantively because as Canadians we have to build each other. Um, uh, so yeah, that is that is that is it from a very selective person in terms of what he or she was telling me and what he or she communicated to me. Mm -hmm. And and it would be very interesting to see the source of where he got that report because if it's a JCCS report that was shared with you, that means it was only five people that had access, the JCCS members. Uh, so it would be very interesting. But having said that, as we know, psychometric results of someone is a confidential document because psychometric, psychometric testing is not something that is out in the public for someone. And that is why NAST council members and JSCC members had access who makes the decision and had information about that issue of the psychometric test. And what I can tell you about psychometric tests is, it tells you that this person in our assessment could be a better fit. This person in our assessment, as in, in terms of testing the batteries, could be a, be a better fit because of A, B, C, A, D. This person might be a good fit, but the person may be in these and these areas. So the onus is then upon those that does pre or that, that, that does whatever um, final decision making that have to be made to look at that psychometric test vis-a-vis -vis what they are seeing within the psychometric test uh, that is needed for the position vis-a-vis -vis considering what is the psychometric test results compared to the other background checks that have been done as a combination. 
And what I can say is the very soon two same candidates, given that there's so much information out there, the very two same candidates were interviewed last year by council, and they also had psychometric results, which was done last year, just last year in 2019. Now, holistically, you look at how these psychometric results are coming out, what is the, um, the background checks telling you against what the psychometric test is telling you and against all the other requirements that you have as a council. Now what I can tell you about JACCS is JACCS had a meeting, it deliberated extensively on all these aspects that you are asking and it came to that conclusion where it again was the majority of the JACCS where we had two out of the five members that indicated that they are not in agreement with, with the recommendation. Three members indicated that they are in agreement with the recommendation. And the recommendation was taken in that sense holistically with all the information that was laid to the council. And council then made its decision. Council did not overthrow. And as for the other things like scores and whatever it can be, given to the relevant bodies that would want to, to, to get access to it. But of course, when it comes to human resources issues, there are certain things that are confidential information that cannot be shared with just anyone. And one of such is a psychometric evaluation. And any psychologist needs a so consensus. That. And that happens at any decision-making process. When you don't reach a consensus where you have everybody saying yes, you, you ask, given that we are not having consensus, which means 100% of everybody agreeing, what is the next step? The next step dictates to you, according to governance, that you then go into voting. And then that voting process will be guided by what is the majority vote that goes into that process. So there is nothing sinister about integrity of the process. There is no integrity, I can guarantee you. And if you look at many of us on that council, you will see, even in terms of our day jobs, integrity is what is keeping us alive every day. Because what we always say is our names are the only thing that stays with us until end, nothing else. So for us, integrity is, is a very critical issue. And therefore, I really want media, I really want media to take out a positive message about NAS. As you have indicated, the past two years, NAS have been in and out of very bad um, reputational damages. A majority of them not even through. People getting the tail end of the story and then decide that if I don't get what I want, I'm gonna take this to the media. Trying to fight battles in a boardroom outside in the media, and that is not the correct way. In terms of differences of opinion, what I have learned is that if you are in a boardroom and you have taken a decision, that decision is a collective decision. People will have differences in terms of opinion. And we, you will put that and say, let me, because I don't agree with this. But at the end of the day, that collective decision, because we have individual and a collective fiduciary responsibility against this institution. And what is very critical is that the moment rumors are being said that we are an instrument of minister. How? Because the minister at no point in time tried to interfere with this process. Right from our appointment, all she was asking us is, when are you finishing the recruitment process? At several of our briefing meetings on NAS activities, she would ask us, how far is the recruitment process, Madam Chair, Council members? That is the discussion, and that was it. Not about a specific candidate.